Devin Jinko looks faster to me, a little bit more busier. His hand speed is a little bit more than Triple G's this in the last two, three rounds. His offense is just tight, Sergio. Look at that. And hard shot to the body. Golovkin is wobbled. Golovkin looks hurt. Golovkin's hurt to the body. Golovkin is firing now. Derevianchenko, good defensive work. And he fires back. Straight up the middle. Uppercut by Golovkin. Derevianchenko has him on the ropes. Now they spin out. Once again, a world champion from Karaganda, Kazakhstan, the new IBF, IBO middleweight champion of the world, Triple G. There you are, commentary from Saturday night in New York City where the vacant IBF middleweight championship was won by Gennady Golovkin. His first world title fight in over a year. Obviously, last time Eddie lost to Alvarez, and he was, Andy Lee, you're welcome to studio, put under his fair share of pressure in this fight, to say the least. He was. He was. It's, it's um, outside of losing to Canelo. There's an argument to say this is his most, even though he won, his most damaging fight, or, you know, his least convincing victory. Because um, in the Canelo fight, it was nip and tuck. He was competing against the very best, and there's an argument that he won the fight. Now, he certainly won this fight, but just the manner in which he won it and, and how, how unconvincing it was. It, was. it was like in stark contrast to the previous Golovkin of before the Canelo fights. So, um, yeah, a lot of eyebrows raised. And this has been talked about as fight of the year territory? So, yeah, it's, it's in the, it, like the last two weeks we've seen Errol Spence versus Sean Potter in Las Vegas, the welterweight unification uh, championship fight. And that was was a thriller. And this this in a different way, not that there was as much skill on show, just that the, the sheer guts and determination and um, the heart that both men showed mm. um, really was it was something to, so it was admirable, you know, something to behold. Golovkin's thirty seven years old now. His uh, opponent, Dervinchenko, thirty three. His pedigree. Ukrainian was at the 2012 Olympics would have been seen by a lot of people losing to Daniel Jacobs for this belt back in November other than that there's plenty of pedigree there yeah like of 350 amateur fights was part of the WSB very successful in that as an amateur um, lost to Danny Jacobs um, which was a split decision but when I recall the fight it was like Jacobs was one of easy you know but it was a re weird fight because those two had trained together for years and they actually had the same coach and for the fight um, Andre Rousey, the coach of both men, had to choose which one, and he chose Jacobs because he had that relationship longer. Um, so it was a bit of a weird situation for both men going into that fight. Um, I think he exceeded like, people's expectations in, in this fight and, okay. and, and how he fought. And I think it's a match of him performing really well and Golovkin showing his age and 40, a 42 fight career. You know. Well, that was the question really I was going to ask was what this means for Golovkin. So he's 37 years of age now. Because he had a knockdown in the first and he gave Dermachenko a bad cut as well in the second. So he was in good shape at the start and then it seemed from the fifth on, I didn't see the fight, I've just watched highlights, that Dermachenko got on top. There was a great report on it by Brian Arman in The Guardian. And you often talk about how a fight takes something out of you, a tough fight. So the phrase he used reminded me of you, where he said, it's likely each man lost something he will never get back after these extraordinary 47 minutes. It was a gruesome exhibition of two-way action where Golovkin absorbed more blows than any previous fight in his career while Dervichenko's eyes were bludgeoned, the grim toll of his relentless uh, pressure approach. The fight of the year surely working both as a tribute to the sport and a reminder we're insane for watching it. <laughs> yeah. That makes you doubly insane <laughs> for taking part well, in it, by the way. When you look at like, Devrianchenko's face after the, after the second round, you know, he sort of cuts, and uh, after the fight, he, you can barely see, his eyes are closed, and um, you just wonder, you know, <laughs> it, will, it will take a lot from him. Um, Golovkin was in great shape in the early parts of the fight and looked like he was just going to go on and it was going to be a typical Golovkin performance, but it was noticeable from the fourth round on, he was very tired. He started to tire. And then Debrashenko found something in those body shots that Glovkin just couldn't hide it. You know, a good fighter, and what Glovkin's, I'm sure he's been hurt before to the body, but this is the first time you've seen Glovkin physically hurt in a fight. Now, if Glovkin was 25, we'd be saying it's just a bit of ring rust and he has to get his fitness back. But he's had a one more fight, you know, he's had a one more fight. He fought Steve Rolls since Canelo. Um, and now there was nothing in that. I think it lasted two or three rounds. Um, the biggest, the most significant change 
uh, is uh, with his age and his crib and those hard fights with Canelo is that he's changed trainer. After the Canelo fight, he he's not he's not his life lifetime coach, but his long term coach was Abel Sanchez, a uh, Mexican American coach who's based in Big Bear, California. They seem very tight. They seem to have a great relationship, and it was very successful. Obviously, unified middleweight championship of the world. Mm. Um, but he left Abel. Um, the reports, like the word is that he didn't want to pay Abel Sanchez the money, and so he recruited Jonathan Banks, a guy I know well, who was from Detroit, who was part of the Kronk stable when I was there, um, who was trained Vladimir Klitschko before. Um, but that's the biggest change, and for me, it's like a marriage of convenience. It's not one. Jonathan Banks is never going to challenge Gennady Golovkin. He's never going to show Gennady Golovkin anything that he doesn't already know. Um, and to me, it's Gennady Golovkin. In would be in the gym telling Jonathan what the train is for the day. And you can't compete at the highest level with that sort of a situ- setup. You know, I don't think so. I think you need to be challenged. You need to have because even in the corner when he was in the crisis in certain rounds. There was no authority there. It was almost apologetic from, from Jonathan Banks. So um, I think they have to address that. They'll have to, to if you can wants to plan. If he continues to, if he plans to continue going forward and fighting the top level, he's going to have to address that the coaching situation. Mm. I, I, I would hate to see him lose to a lesser fighter just because he continues to go on too long. You know, I'm not sure what he needs to. I'm sure. Sure, his future, financial future is, is, is well secured now, his legacy is secured, but it would be tarnished if he continues too long and fights somebody who would never beat him uh, when, he, when he was at his best. And is he working towards an Alvarez at uh, uh, the trilogy? He wants that, yeah, that's what he longs for. Um, but it was the- haunting that many people feel he won, won, if not both of those fights, yeah. a draw and then a split decision loss. Mm. That must haunt him, that's very hard to stomach. Especially him, and he chased that fight for a long time. And then he gets it, and then they, in the first fight now, more so than the first drawn fight, yeah. um, there was, he's room with a real shout of winning it. I felt the draw was fine, but a lot of people had him winning. Um, the second fight, I felt Alvarez won, yeah. but it could, you could, it's still a time cost. Okay, but Alvarez will look at this fight on Saturday and say, okay. Yes, certainly, <laughs> you know, but... Yeah, I, I, I would just, I'd love to see him go, go have a homecoming in Kazakhstan, have a big event there, fight an ha- easy fight and retire as a legend because mm. it's only going to end badly for him. You think so? You look well, at this. Well, if, if he wants to compete with Alvarez, even Billy Joe Saunders, I think, would beat him now. Okay. Um, so you do think it's age as opposed to... Yeah, I think so. As well as the, the, the change in his training regime mm. um, and the hard fights he's had. Mm. Okay, he's 37, you know. I presume there are not. There are very few partnerships where the boxer bossed the trainer around, and the trainer didn't have much authority. No, well, no, not successful ones. I couldn't couldn't see it. Okay, so even when a fighter becomes incredibly rich, incredibly famous, incredibly incredibly powerful, on a certain level, they understand that actually, without this trainer, I'm in a bit of trouble, and that's what gives the authority to the yeah. trainer. And you need to have that reverence and respect, even if you like. It, as soon as you lose that belief in what the coach is telling you, then it's then it's gone because they become you undermine the coach or you don't buy into it, you don't commit to it. Like if he's telling you to do X amount of rounds or certain drills, you don't buy into it. You do, but you don't do it with the same intensity. Yes, and there's probably an equivalent to the placebo effect, where even if the advice you're getting is not spectacularly good, if you that's commit a, yourself a to the, it, a lot of the times that's the case. Yeah. With most most fighters you commit yourself to bad tactics. You believe it works, and yeah. so it works. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a tricky situation then, because I would presume Golovkin would find it hard to find any trainer who would be able to tell him things he didn't know already, but it's, it's just small things, is it? Yeah, and it would be, like, I just, I don't want to make it a personal, but I know Jonathan Banks personally, and I just know that it wouldn't be a good fit. Okay. Or, it, as I said, it's, it's like, it's a convenient setup for Golovkin. Sure. Um, but, it, it, like, tellingly, there's been some, like, Golovkin's tweeted some Team GGG photos, and the only absence is Jonathan Banks. Okay. Why didn't you just pay up the extra few quid? I don't know. They could have, it could have been. That's not, uh, maybe the only reason, but that's, that's the word on the, on the street. Okay. So that was Golovkin, and that was a great fight if people haven't seen it. And then Joe Ward, meanwhile. Huge shock. I have um, commentary here. This is not for the squeamish if you... Uh, if you're, are you, if you want to, to look at this. Yeah. Do, not wa- do not watch this if you're in any way squeamish, because it's fair to say, you know, sometimes you watch Premier League now, and it's, oh, the producer has told us we're not going to show this tackle. 
<laughs> the Americans were more than happy to show various angles. So here was a terrible moment for Joe Ward. So if you didn't catch this story, I'm sure most of you have. He was fighting in Madison Square Garden. As you can imagine, a huge evening for him. His debut fight in the second round. An awkward mix-up of feet and he ends up on the floor and his fight is over. Whoa! Oh, man, that could have been a bad leg injury. Let's see if Ward can get up. Oh, his knee. Oh, my God. I... He may have dislocated his left knee. And that's what happens with oh. southpaws, southpaws and, and orthodox fighters. They step on each other's feet. I said it in the first round, and there you get an example. He stepped on his feet. He went backwards. And ouch. Yes, that's that's brutal oh, right man. there. I mean, that's that's the worst. That's a nightmare for a pro debut for, for such a, a, a sensational amateur with, with, with a lot ahead. Oh, that's brutal. Wow. One minute, take round. Took an awkward step. His foot almost minute, rolled up underneath him. I thought it was his ankle originally, but then it was the knee as they try and straighten it out. You could see the kneecap. Wow. It looked like it popped back in. The doctor popped it back in, whatever was uh, protruding out there. And he did pop it back in. Ward stayed incredibly calm. He's had a similarly bad injury in 2013 before, so maybe there's a residual weakness there, but... That's incredibly bad luck. Uh, yeah, I know his, his promoter, Ludabella, is going to appeal to the New York um, Athletic Commission to um, have the ruling overturned. It's, it's down now as a KO loss, TKO loss, but um, they, might, they have an argument that it'll be a no contest. But it will, I think it'll have to be done this week, apparently. They'll find out in the next few days. Um, tough one for him. It's not. It's a loss, but it's not a loss. You know, it's it's just a. It's a miss. Well, I was going to say it's a misstep. That seems like the wrong yeah. word to use. The thing is, <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. The thing with it is that, how long does it keep him out? And you know, is it always going to be a doubt? No. Yeah. It's it's, just, it's like we've had a string of strange um, in boxing recently. You know, remember Frampton had the the pillar fall on his hand and the fight got cancelled and. Uh, jo Joseph Parker was supposed to fight Derek Chajor, Derek Chajor at the end of the month and apparently he got bitten by a spider yeah. and now he's out of the fight <laughs> he's doing taking ill <laughs> and now this one and uh, it just shows you like yeah it's a real pity yeah. we wish him well uh, we should touch on the fact that actually you have now gone from enjoying your life enjoying being a father <laughs> chilling out I'll take our leave coaching to now coaching two different fighters yeah <laughs> Jeez, you must have been bored silly. No. So, uh, well, let's start with because um, Paddy Donovan, who I know you're talking about this and off the brawl anyway, but he's making his debut at Ulster Hall, Belfast, on Friday. Yes. He is talked about in glowing terms. I've heard his name without having seen him fight, really. He's signed a multi year professional contract with Bob Arum. He's out of Our Lady of Lords Club in Limerick, the welterweight division. Uh, he's been considered by many maybe the most gifted young boxer in the country without trying to put too much pressure on him, a southpaw. And he's making his pro debut? He is making his pro debut on Friday. So when did you start working with Paddy Donovan and why? And are you now a coach? Are you now a former world champion and coach? <laughs> yeah. And elite? And a manager. Yeah. Uh, and I you're managing him the, too, isn't that right? I started... I met Paddy... I'd met Paddy since he was a kid, you know, from being from Limerick. I knew him for a long time, but never really... Um, I saw him at the national finals in February of this year. He lost a tight decision there to Kieran Malloy and he was disgusted and I was talking to him and his dad approached me and said, some people have been in touch about him turning pro, could you help us out and give us some advice? So I said, certainly, and I put some feelers out for Paddy and everyone was coming back, oh yeah, we've heard of him and we'd like to work with him and, and me and Paddy were, were speaking regularly and talking to his dad and I said, look, I, I really bought into him and I really am, like all those things you said, um, I, I, I recognise him straight away. He's, he's, he's an immensely talented young fighter. And, I, and when I got to know him on a personal level, he's a young, lovely young man, type of, type of guy you'd like to be spending time with. Um, and so I just said, I'll train you, I'll manage you, and I'll, I'll get you a deal with top rank. And that's what I did. And we've been working together ever since, training maybe like three days a week, in a, just, just while we were for, forming a bond and training. And uh, yeah, it's a completely different thing for me. Well now, well now Jason Quigley has come along too. That's only in the recent recent uh, f last few weeks. He, as you know, lost a huge fight. Yeah. Um, he's rebuilding and we've spoken at length about it even before he asked me to train train him and then I guess for him it made sense and look, I'm, I'm happy to help him in any way I can. 
Because yeah, I heard him, he was speaking to a radio station up in Donegal there this week and he was saying initially, he said, well, let's just give it a few weeks and see how we like each other and, mm. and feel this thing out. It must be like any relationship. And it seemed to go reasonably well. And there's no real set time limit on it. It's like, no. well, let's, let's, let's have a yeah, fight let's here. Just see, now. Yeah, let's fight. He's fight in California in December? Uh, December 5th in California. Um, it'll be his comeback fight now. Um, they're lining up an opponent for him. And yeah, like he's... You you know he's a lovely guy. Yes. So yeah. that and that's like you said, your time and energy in life is the most valuable thing. It's the only thing you can't get back. And if I'm going to be spending a lot of time with these guys, I have to get along with them. You know that's probably more important than their their ability in the ring. <laughs> but yeah, Jason, um, he's responding well. He's very teachable for a guy who's already accomplished so much. Um, he's open to everything I'm telling him, and he's and he's he doesn't repeat mistakes. Anything I point out to him, he'll he'll take it take it on board and that makes life as a coach yeah, easy within the next day he's not doing it and okay. so um, that's it yeah he's, he's made improvements already and are you enjoying the coaching I am yeah I am yeah it's a different thing it's a different challenge it's a completely different challenge And but it, it is something that ta- like when you're boxing you can just well now you're always thinking about the fight but you, when you're training you just you work you focus on the session then when it's over you switch off but when you're co- now that I'm coaching it's like I'm thinking about it all the time and looking at old videos of myself and Emmanuel on the pads and listening to old interviews with him and things that he would have said. And, yeah, you're just thinking about it. And how just challenging them. You know, Paddy is a guy who's super talented and you're going to have to keep, keep him stimulated because he'd easily get bored and won't put the effort in. OK. He, um, he needs to be engaged in what you're yeah, teaching him. Yeah, all the time. What age is Paddy? 20. Without heaping pressure on a guy... It sounds like you're saying he's got world title potential down the line. Yeah, he has. He has more reasons for him to become a world champion than than, than not. Okay. But Dodgy the, coach. <laughs> yeah. The biggest, biggest thing he has to overcome is now is that this is not an amateur sport. It's a lifestyle now and every decision he makes has to has to help him towards his professional boxing, you know, outside of the ring as well as inside the ring. And do you see, so in terms of the knowledge you can impart... And I appreciate Jason is at a very different stage to Paddy. It sounds like you're more thinking of uh, skills and tactics and how to throw combinations and all that stuff as opposed to, well, this is how you get fit and this is, you know, how you live your life oh, outside the ring. That's where yeah. you feel you, you, you help them the most. I, I, th- I, think, I think you have to do both okay. nowadays. You have to do both. With a manual, it's very much so what happens in the gym, the skills and, and the attitude and the mentality. But... When I switched with Adam, it was definitely much about the um, physicality of it, the athleticism and um, the fitness, mm. as well as the technique. And, and I'm p- trying to blend both of those and in, in the midst of doing that, find my own style and my identity as a coach. Yes, which I'm sure is a... a, a I'm learning as they're learning, you know? Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you must be coming home certain days saying, mm, f- I, did I address that the right way? Yeah, or I know. I... And, and at the mo- like, over time, I will build up a language. And me and Paddy are yeah, like a shorthand where... He'll know, I'll just have to say one or two words and he'll know what I mean. But I'm still finding that as well. But at the moment, I can display, I'm can i still able, not too old, I can still display it, you know, the technique. And that's probably, it's probably easier to learn from your examples than it is if I tell him. You know, I can actually just show him it. Um, and that's, that's, that's part of my teaching at the moment. My teaching? <laughs> While I can still right. can. <laughs> You think, of, well, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is maybe a bad example to use now, but by all accounts, every day after training, he went home and took a few notes. This is what Alex Ferguson did today at this stage in the mm. season, and when the team was going through this, this is what Ferguson did. He was already almost trying to prepare for coaching life. Not did, that it's doing him much use. <laughs> well, so it's, that's why it's a terrible example to use. Yeah. However, did you listen to Emmanuel and to Adam Booth in those terms ever and think, oh, I'm going to remember that just in case I go into coaching? I don't know. Never with the idea of coaching, no. Yeah. Um, but always certain things stick in your head, things that make sense, and the things that that are kind of op- that things that you've known know are true, but never been verbalised. And then yes. these guys say it, and then it opens your mind. It's like, oh, re- yeah, that's actually very true. You know, I've often felt that way, or that's happened to me, and I never actually thought about it in that way. You're now going to have to break down opponents as well, tactically. Yeah. Are you that's a strength? Fun. Are you good that's at that? Fun. I hope so. We'll see. Like we'll see. It's my debut as well on Friday. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be in the corner. 
And you've been in a corner for a few times before. Have you? certainly once before. I've done plenty corners. I've never been the lead. Okay. Never been the lead. Never been. Are you taking advice from anyone? Are you having to think about your no. demeanour during that? Uh, Adam, yeah, well, I am. Uh, with Adam and with a man, with a manual, if you needed it, he would light a fire under you, like you know. But uh, most of the time, it was very calm, very one or two things, nothing, not, not bombard you, and give you space, and let you think yourself. And that's that's what that's what I think will be. We'll mm. see. I might lose it. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. God, I hope we see you yeah. losing the plot in the corner now. So we'll see how it goes. Have you had to light fires under the lads? Have you got you? A couple of times with Paddy. Yeah, Paddy's never had to work hard to be successful. As an, he's so talented. Yes. And that's the hardest. But with Jason coming on board, like the reasons were obviously to help him and for him to improve mm. and for me to my reputation to improve as well with him. But he will set an example for for Paddy because Jason lives the right life outside of the gym. Okay. Inside the gym, he trains very hard. He's dedicated, and that's what Paddy needs to see: is examples. As I said, this is what it takes. I can keep telling him everything, but yeah. you know, I will be eating pizza while he's going to be eating salads. <laughs> <laughs> you train the two. I think the gym's now. Yeah, together. they're going to, and they will spar together. Jason's obviously just coming back. Paddy's kind of really sharp at the moment. So after this fight, Paddy's scheduled to fight. It's all going well. Paddy will fight again November 16th in Glasgow, and then they'll be sparring together. So. Good on you. I mean, it's, yeah. it's good to do something like this. I know you're. It is, yeah. Like most people play golf, you know, a couple of days a week. We don't knock golf. No, I know, but like, <laughs> this is something to do for me. It's an investment. I spend my time, you know. It's retired, it'll be two years in February. And okay. Maybe that's a good time to start. You've, yeah. Because you, you were, I think you were pretty good about giving yourself a bit of space to think, well, I'm not going to commit to something too I enjoyed, big. I enjoyed, yeah, my yeah. my daughter when she was born and our time, but you probably get, probably fall into a vacuum if I, you know, if I left it any longer. So I need to. Yeah. Put my energy into it. The Andy Lee gym down the line, a we'll stable. See, we'll see, yeah. No, cool no. Thing. Two is not for now, anyway. <laughs> it's like that. Brian, case. I was talking to Brian Peters. He was like, Andy, are you sure you want to do this now? Because I was asking him. He was one who asked for his advice. Okay. And he said, it's like having another child. You won't realize it, but it is. And I was like, ah, I'd be fine. But he's actually right. You know, you're, you're thinking time. Yeah, and, you, and you're taking up, like, you know, you're organizing licenses and medicals, outfits, you know. You have to do all that stuff. <laughs> I'm doing it. I know. At this stage, I do. Wait you need an assistant. Wait till he, yeah, wait till he gets the entourage, they can take it over. What was Adam Boot's big piece of advice? He's a deep thinker. Adam thinks it's a good idea. He, uh, the first first ever trip, me and Paddy, first, within the first few weeks, Paddy wasn't even, tra- we hadn't even trained really. We'd done a few sessions. We went out to Adam and he sparred with Adam's kid, Josh Kelly, who's like t- probably the highest touted prospect. And, um, him and Paddy were nip and tuck in the spa. It was like very, very close. Uh, you probably give it to Josh, but Paddy was holding his own for a kid with no no fights and not even really training. And Adam said, like Adam was like, this kid's got it. This kid has got it. He said. So he says, good luck. You know, he just said he, he he's just watching with interest. He's keeping in touch, asking me how things are going, and yeah. um, I think he might come over to Belfast and watch his fight. Brilliant. So we'll see. Great, great. Well, listen, best of luck with it. That's great. It's kind yeah. of exciting. It is, yeah. It'll be good. Uh, hopefully, we can get Joseph up and we get some footage of it. And, 100%. Uh, show it yeah. on Off the Ball Challenge channels. Abs- absolutely. Off the Brawl, I guess, and, and everything ball, and, yeah. and in here. And it'd be great to chat to him sometime. Uh, good man. Listen, thanks, thanks. So much for coming in. Appreciate thanks it. Thanks very much, Joe.